So, you just bought a Nest Hub. Congrats! Now what? Given the soft fabric on the side, do you rub it against your face just to feel it? I mean, sure, it's a little weird, but it's yours. You can do what you want. Do you use it as a mirror, given that the dark screen is reflective when it's off? Again, I can't stop you, but what I might suggest is turning it on. And once you do, here's how to get the most out of your Nest Hub. Hi, I'm Andrew from Apt, and this newly powered on device is the Nest Hub. It's kind of a tablet, kind of a smart home controller, kind of a smart speaker. It can do a lot. Not enough for you. It's also a sleep sensor, recipe aid, and alarm clock. Still not satisfied. You can make calls, listen to music, and watch videos. More? You can use your voice to ask questions, play games, search for nearby restaurants. Oh God, I can't stop. You can display photos, control it with gestures, browse news or the weather. Look, it can do a lot. Let's everybody calm down. I'm going to go through everything here. If you just bought this for yourself, I'll help you get the most out of it by talking through the highlight features that you'll want to take advantage of, as well as tips and tricks if you bought this as a gift for someone, I'll talk through setup so your recipient can hit the ground running and discuss some things that go well with it if you're trying to fill out that stocking. If you received this as a gift and you don't know what to do with it, I've got you covered with the basics all the way through the advanced stuff. Whoever gave it to you is gonna be so impressed the next time they visit. Check out the time codes below if you're looking for something specific and let's get to it. The basics. Again, this device is called the Nest Hub. It's technically the Nest Hub 2 or Nest Hub 2nd Gen or Nest Hub Part 2 Revenge of Google. Yes, it's a device made by Google and Google is a giant tech company first known for a search engine. Again, we always start very basic. If you don't know what Google is, no judgment. To find out more details, just, you know, Google it. They later acquired Nest, a smart home company best known for a smart thermostat. And so Google's recent smart home gadgets have generally come out bearing the Nest name. The first Nest Hub was actually originally called the Google Home Hub before the brand shift. So if you've been out of the loop for a while, this device is the direct successor to that one. The two are pretty similar in functionality Generally speaking, you'll control the device with voice commands. Here are the wake words. I'm avoiding saying them so that I don't accidentally wake your devices if you have them and they're set up already. But if you say either of these phrases, you'll be able to issue commands to the device. Google adds functionality to its assistant, just called Google Assistant all the time. So it's pretty robust at this point in terms of what it can do and what it will respond to. And after most voice commands, Google will show extra pertinent info here on the screen. Ask about the weather, it'll respond and pull up a forecast. Ask about a recipe, it'll show a list of ingredients. Command your smart home devices, you'll see a control panel here to make fine adjustments. What's new with the second gen as opposed to the first is sleep tracking, gesture controls, and better sound if you're using it to play music. But since I'm comparing now to what came before, I think you need to go into how it fits into the overall competitive picture as far as smart displays are concerned. We're gonna keep this next section short and snappy because this video is mostly for those of you who already have your Nest Hub in hand. But in case you don't, in case you're still making a buying decision, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know in 60 seconds or less, unscripted. We call this segment Briefly before you buy. Ready on the timer? Go. Okay, so the Nest Hub, the Nest Hub Max, if you're shopping for a product by Google, these are pretty much your two options. This has a seven inch screen, this has a 10 inch screen. So there's not that much of a difference, even though this one dwarfs the other guy in size. This guy also has a camera. So if you wanna do video calls, it also has face recognition built in. So a handful of features, but the second gen Nest Hub has sleep recognition and this one doesn't. That said, Google is also coming out with a Pixel tablet, which is gonna have a dock and it's gonna double as 
a ordinary tablet and a smart display. So that's a neat thing on the near term horizon that's coming out soon, but it will inevitably be more expensive. This one is still nicely affordable. It fits into a lot of places. Other products with Google Assistant, Lenovo has a smart alarm clock, a smart display. Amazon has a whole fleet of them, eight inches, five inches, 10 inches, and even Apple is supposedly coming out with a smart display in the near term, but they're all very different platforms. If you want a Google one, this is still a very nice one at a very nice price. I was close. <laughs> now that you have your Nest Hub in hand, let's get it set up. Gather everything you need first. You need your device, a phone, either Android or Apple will do with the Google Home app installed. You need a nearby outlet and you need one cup of sugar. The sugar isn't actually for setup. I just need to ask you to borrow some later and I wanted to make sure you had it. Then you're gonna plug in your Nest Hub. Most of the process is automated, but you need to get it started. Give the Nest Hub a sec to boot up, then you're gonna open the Google Home app. You might see a prompt to set up your device at the top of the screen. If not, just hit the plus, then set up device, then new device. The app will walk you through the rest, including setting up your smart home if this is your first device. You're gonna get a prompt to name your home and another to name your smart hub and the room that you're putting it in. I recommend simple descriptives for all of this. It scales way better and then you'll know what to address this as it's talking to you. Now, don't get me wrong, I'd find it hilarious too if you named your hub Nesty McNestface. And you could name your room Roomy McRoomface and your smart house Smarty McSmartface. Each time you do it, it's gonna get much more clever than the last you comedic genius, you. But if you end up with multiple Nest Hubs, then what are you gonna do? Nesty McSecond Nest Hub face? No, that doesn't flow at all, you've lost it. So, naming your kitchen, kitchen, and the Nest Hub you put in there, kitchen hub, will end up working much better later if you do expand your smart home. Otherwise, follow the prompts in the app, you'll get your device connected to Wi-Fi, go through some user agreements, the usual stuff. Google will prompt you to teach the Nest Hub your voice. Do this if you feel comfortable, and then you'll be rolling, and it'll look like this. If you do teach it your voice, it'll help the device personalize recommendations for you. And then you can invite other family members via the app so they can train it to recognize their voice. And then Google can keep your playlist straight and your calendars straight so you don't accidentally trade places with your kid and go to their swimming lesson while they go to your adult businessy business meeting that adults have. But now that we're talking about personalization, let's see what this gadget can do in action. We're taking a tour of your Nest Hub now that it's on. As I said, you can use your voice or touch to control the device. So, tell me about the weather. And it'll pull up a display. And you'll see more detailed info here. It keeps going for a little bit, but now notice if I scroll over, I see more details. And so you can touch or interact. Notice these follow-up questions here. I could ask any of those, or if I'm done, I can just swipe from the left side of the screen and I come back to this, my screensaver here. If I swipe, swipe from the right side of the screen, you'll notice that I see info cards, which are somewhat personalized. Again, here's weather, here's different info. And then now notice the tabs along the top here. So it pulls some personal info, but also if I can tap any of these, and now it takes me into, I can control my connected smart devices from a convenient menu, media, communication for making calls. You even have things like you can play games with these menus up here. And again, at any time I wanna go back, I just swipe that way. Now you actually can do some customization on here as well. If I swipe up from the bottom, you'll notice a drawer of apps as well as some quick settings you can get to such as brightness and volume. But if I want a more detailed settings, I can access that here too. So I tap that button and I can access uh, device info to get to Wi-Fi. I can customize what that screensaver is. 
set things like motion sense, sleep sensing, which we'll talk about in more details later. So a bit of customization and a somewhat simple touch control that complements your voice controls for the device. Voice commands, touch controls, automation, oh my! Now that you know your way around the device, let's focus on some of the basic features. Gestures. Make sure motion sense is on with the settings menu right here. Turn it on in the app as well and then watch this. Oh no, I need to pause my music and my hands are covered in Cheeto dust. Whatever shall I do? Tap. Paused. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty cool. And if I tap the air again, we're back to grooving. You can do the same gesture to tell Google Assistant to stop talking if it's blathering on and you enjoy its company, but sometimes you just need a little peace and quiet, you know? Just me? Now, could you have used a voice command in place of either or both of those gestures? Yeah, but shut up, it's cool. And while shut up, use the gestures. And it is handy if you're trying to be quiet or you're in a loud environment, Another gesture. Let's say your alarm is sounding in the morning and, oh no, I want to sleep for a few more minutes and swipe snoozed. You can dismiss timers the same way, like you're an orchestra conductor waving yourself back to a comfy sleep or a comfy, I don't need that timer anymore state. I talked about using gestures to play and pause media. What media, you ask? Music videos, music videos. Most of the strange shape at the base of the screen is a speaker and you can play just about every music streaming service you can think of through Google Assistant. So Spotify, Pandora, iHeartRadio, Deezer, Apple Music, TuneIn Radio, YouTube Music. Here's where you can set up those services in the Google Home app. Make sure your account is the right one by tapping account top right. Then tap the plus button and select music to link a service. You can make any of those services your default too. So if you ask Google to play a song with a voice command, it'll know to search Spotify or Pandora for that song first. If you want pictures to go along with the ear candy, when you know it, the screen can play videos. Again, Google has done a good job of making this compatible with just about every service you can think of, or at least every service I can think of. You maybe have a better imagination than me? Anyway, Disney+, Plus, Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, Paramount+, Plus, HBO Max, Apple TV, and again, here's where to look to get these services synced up in the home app. You can't get Amazon Music or Prime Video here, because. Amazon has a competing device, but just about everything else is here. Now, do you actually want to sit down and watch a movie on this seven inch screen? No, you told me earlier that you didn't, you know, in that conversation we had, but you can still put something on in the background while you cook or get ready for bed or set a different device as a default playback device. So you can still give the command to your Nest Hub, but the video will start playing on your Chromecast, for example, that's hooked up to your TV. You can do the same thing with music. You set up those defaults right here in the app. Now, speaking of things you actually wanna use the screen for, how about perusing the family photo album? You need Google Photos to make this work. But Google Photos is free, so it's definitely worth it. Cause when you're not using it, the Nest Hub actually makes for a stellar digital photo frame. Seriously, look at these pictures. Google has a way of automatically adjusting the light and coloring to make it look almost like they're actual photos in a frame instead of a glowing digital image. The competition still hasn't matched the warmth here. It's neat nifty if you will and pretty easy to set up again download the google photos app if you don't have it and set up some albums google will actually help you and can create live albums of your friends and family by recognizing their faces and grouping those pictures together it is it is very handy but you can turn this feature off if it's too creepy for you but the cool thing about those live albums is that they'll automatically update. 
As you take more pictures of your pet snake Fluffy, Google will automatically add them to the Fluffy album. And if you've shared that album with anyone, they'll get updated pics too. So grandma and grandpa can enjoy the latest pics of Fluffy on their Nest Hub without you needing to do anything besides sharing the live album initially and then continuing to take pics of your photogenic snake. To set this up on your Nest Hub, swipe up, tap settings, and then photo frame Google Photos. Or you can do the same in the Google Home app. Touch and hold the device, settings, photo frame, Google Photos. And this is where you'll select an album you've made or the family and friends you want to include as part of live albums. You'll know you're up and running once you see Fluffy's picture front and center. So cuddly, that Fluffy. I just want to rub him against my face. Someday, like a nest hub. Speaking of getting lost, let's figure out the best place in your home for your nest hub. Now, you're thinking, kind of late for this, yeah? I already have it set up. Well, first of all, pretty cool that I knew exactly what you were thinking, right? Secondly, nah, you can just unplug it, move it, and plug it back in wherever. It'll hop back onto your Wi-Fi in just a sec, assuming you're still in range, and you'll barely miss a beat. Just relabel it in the app after you move it. And the reason to put it into some different rooms involves more advanced features, so here we are. Now, the Nest Hub is small enough and it's useful enough that you could probably put it wherever, but I'll focus on two likely candidates, the kitchen or your bedroom. If you're at all uncomfortable with Google's magic device knowing a lot about you, don't put it in your bedroom. It has some neat functionality in there, but your comfort is most important and it can do plenty as a kitchen device. I mentioned those gesture controls. That's perfect for when your hands are covered in eggs and grease and paprika. I don't cook very much. I'm gonna assume the first step to cooking any meal is immediately covering your hands in eggs, grease, and paprika. Although I don't have to make too many guesses as far as the process if I have the Nest Hub around. It's great at guiding you through recipes. Like if I wanna make some chocolate chip cookies, I can search options with a voice command, pull one up, and it'll walk me through ingredients and steps. I can even watch videos or play music while I do this, and it'll hop back to right where I left off when I command it to. I can even add an ingredient to my shopping list if I find out that I'm missing something midway through the process, like, oh, hey, can I borrow some sugar? Let me know in the comments below. And once the cookies are done, I can broadcast a message to any other Google speakers or displays on my account so the family comes running. Or slowly slithering in the case of Fluffy. Can a snake eat chocolate? You know what, let me ask the hub. Can a snake eat chocolate? On the website vegavega.com, they say, well, technically, snakes can Oh my gosh, that's a long answer. Reptiles are okay to have a small amount. We will advise against it. It is probably likely to cause diarrhea. Stop! We don't actually need to hear about snakes' bowel movements after they do eat chocolate, but those are the important questions. Other people in the house can also reply to your broadcast to let you know that they're not hungry. And then I can use the Nest Hub to make a phone call so I can, with much dignity, go crying to my mom because my housemates didn't appreciate my fictional cooking. With calling, you have to enable personal voice results and voice match in the app. So the Nest Hub is a great kitchen helper. But if you do feel comfortable bringing this thing with you into the bedroom, you can take advantage of one of its newest features, sleep sensing. Now, it's important to note here that the Nest Hub doesn't have a camera. This is a sensor, it's not a camera. And there's a mute button on the back. And Google has promised not to use data from sleep sensing for ads. The data for cough and snoring detection is processed locally, not sent to the cloud. They're saying the right things, accept it as you may. Regardless, the tech here is cool. It's touchless sleep tracking. Normally to track your sleep, you need a smart wearable like this. Nope, not here. You just need to set this up on your nightstand and 
point it at yourself. Swipe up from the bottom of the display, settings, sleep sensing. Note that you can customize a little as far as what it detects. By default, it uses radar to sense your movement and breathing. It has light and temperature sensors to round out the picture by gauging your sleep environment. And its mics listen for snoring or coughing. You can turn off that last part and keep the rest intact if you feel that's a bridge too far. And then you can just go to sleep. Try it now while I gently hum you a lullaby. No, you know what? We should probably finish the video first and then we'll have earned all of the lullabies and the sleeping. But when you wake up, you're going to see something like this. These circles represent the duration, schedule and quality of your sleep. It'll know if you tossed or turned, if you were coughing or snoring, naughty or nice. And you might get recommendations such as going to bed earlier or later or cooling down the room if Google senses a restless or short night of sleep. Now, having a significant other in bed with you or having a pet climb up to snuggle, snake or otherwise, can indeed mess up the algorithm since it's touchless. But early reviews indicate it's pretty accurate regardless. It can even tell the difference between when you're sleeping and sitting up in bed reading. Google gets its recommendations from the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. But you know, it's not a doctor. It's a smart display. Hey, I knew that one. Plus, it obviously can't tell you as much about your heart rate and REM cycles as a wearable, but it's a good amount of data if you want some tracking but don't want to wear a bracelet to bed. Plus, it's free. Yay! But only for now. Boo. And you can see the data in an app as well. Yay! But it's an entirely different app called Google Fit. Boo. Also, Google acquired Fitbit a while back, and supposedly the sleep sensing will be part of that Fitbit premium service. And when it's time to wake up, well, hey, look at that. It mimics a sunrise. And honestly, I love sunrise alarms. The light on the display comes up slowly over a set amount of time before you need to actually get out of bed. And I think it's a glorious way of getting eased out of a deep sleep that I much prefer to a sudden buzzing. So it's a good bedroom helper, a smart one, if you will. And having it in the bedroom could help you make a last check on your smart gadgets before you hit the hay. Though it's a good smart home controller in any room. You can access a control panel like this and scroll through and make adjustments to your devices. Since it's made by Nest, it works the best with other Nest devices, like Nest thermostats and cameras and doorbells. They make a lot of stuff. But Google Assistant works with a huge variety of gadgets. It's still second to Amazon in terms of pure numbers of compatible devices, but functionally speaking, the list is very similar in terms of major smart home brands, stuff you'd find shopping, stuff you actually want to buy. If you want ideas for what to put into a smart home and what you can do with a cool smart home setup, check out the links below. And I spent a lot more time on the smart home in my last video right here on the Apple HomePod. And all of that functionality still applies here. You just need to use the Google Home app instead of the Apple Home app. And you can add new devices to your Google Assistant ecosystem right here. Then put them into rooms, control them with voice commands, show off, have fun. Remember, simple names though, so not too much fun. I prefer reasoned, rational amounts of fun. You know what would be fun, reasoned, and rational? If you could hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to our new YouTube channel. This is a new YouTube channel. Carl and I will be hosting a wide variety of videos talking you through how to get the most of your electronic purchases, big and small. We work for an electronic store in Illinois called Apt. And We've been doing this stuff for a while. In fact, a lot of the folks that work at Apt have been doing this a while. So we want to bring that expertise to you and it is an electronic store. So if you're looking for accessories to add to your purchase, again, check out the links below. But mostly, we're here to help. So 
comment below if you have questions that I didn't cover. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Thank you very much for watching and happy smart helping.